Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to talk about the recent updates to Emmy Deck for the Steam Deck. Now I've made several videos about Emmy Deck previously, and this is a really handy tool. It essentially will set up all your emulation for you on the Steam Deck, including the emulators themselves, but then also the configurations to make it a more seamless experience. And I already have a full setup video guide. I'll leave that link down below. This is a continuation of that. We're going to talk about the new features and updates that they've created since then. And some of these updates are really handy. In addition to streamlining the user interface and making everything easier to navigate, we also have some added emulators. And some of these are really near and dear to my heart, so we'll do a showcase of those later in this video. And then finally, we'll talk about the Yuzu and Citra emulators, and it's surprisingly easy to add these back into Emudeck. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so as a quick recap, Emudeck is a tool that you will use to download and install emulators onto your device, and then also we will configure it for you at the same time. And this tool started with the Steam Deck, that's why it's called Emudeck, but it has expanded to other platforms since then. Now, personally, I like to use Emudeck in two different ways. The first is that I like to take my very favorite games and integrate them into the actual SteamOS interface. This means that if I'm on my homepage and I'm just kind of browsing through my most recently played games, I'll see them there. But then also within my library, if I go to the non-Steam game section, I'll see a bunch of them here as well. And these are my absolute favorite games, those that I want to have integrated into the SteamOS interface. However, I do have more emulated games than this on my device, I just don't want them taking up that much clutter. And this is where a front-end or launcher app will actually come into play. There are two currently available with Emudeck. The first one is called ESDE, or Emulation Station Desktop Edition, and this is the one that I tend to use the most. So all of my emulated games, including those that are integrated in SteamOS, are found within here. This means I can have a rather large emulation library without taking up a bunch of space on my SteamOS interface. And there are many different ways that you can use Emudeck. You can either have it all integrated in SteamOS, or put it all into Emulation Station, or somewhere in between like I do. Now, like I mentioned, Emudeck is available not only on the Steam Deck, but on a bunch of other platforms, including a couple Linux builds like Chimera OS, and they've also got a Windows version. So if you've got a Windows handheld or you just want to use it on your desktop, you can do that as well. They're also working on an Android version. That means it'll install all the emulators directly onto your Android device and also configure them. This one's still in beta release and under early access. So if you want to test it yourself, you have to be a patron. And once it gets a little bit more stable, I plan on making a guide video for that one as well. Now, now directly on the Emudeck page, you can actually find the two Emudeck guides that I've already made. On the left is the SteamOS one, and then on the right is the Windows version. And of course, I'll leave my Steam Deck guide in the video description below. So from this point on, I'm going to assume you already have Emudeck installed on your Steam Deck, and you want to update, but you want to make sure you also don't screw everything up. And so that's what we're going to do for the rest of this video. We're going to update Emudeck, talk about some of those new features, and then also some of the new emulators and games that you can play on it. Now, updating Emudeck on your Steam Deck is very simple. You just need to go into desktop mode, then make sure you're connected to the internet, and then click on the Emudeck app image on your desktop. From there, it's going to check for updates, it'll find them, and then it's going to update it. When you do update, it's going to show you a list of changes that have happened since the last time that you've updated. It's been a while for me, so it's showing off some things that are kind of old at this point, for example, Emudeck for Windows, and they do have a new front-end launcher and selector named Pegasus, we'll talk about that later in this video. They've also made a bunch of UI changes for things like Steam ROM Manager, as well as just the overall UI for Emudeck. For example, now you can see that all the updated features are available on the left sidebar. That does make it quite a bit easier to navigate. And some of these are going to look familiar. For example, the quick settings. This is where you can adjust things like auto saves or bezels or your aspect ratio for certain systems. But there is one section that is new and that's the controller layout. Here you can choose whether or not you want the emulators to conform to the A, B, and XY pattern on the Steam Deck, or if you'd rather have the buttons correspond to the position that they were on the original controller that you're emulating. Personally, I like to emulate the position of the buttons, but if you want to make sure that A is always A, you can change that to the controller layout match instead. Now, under the Manage Emulator section, this is where you're going to make a lot of new updates. This is where the magic happens. And we are going to spend quite a bit of time in here, including installing new emulators. But before we do that, one of the things I like to do every time that I open up Emudeck is to update my configurations and emulators. You're going to find this at the top of your Manage Emulators page, and usually I will reset my configurations first, and then also I like to update my emulators. Now emulators are saved in two different ways on the Steam Deck. 
And so you will have to run the update script twice. First, you're going to update your flat packs. This is pretty straightforward. You'll just hit OK, and then everything will update. After that, we can update all the other stuff. That's going to include app images, binaries, as well as Windows executables. So let's go ahead and update these as well. One thing of note, if you're going to update Simu, which is the Nintendo Wii U emulator, it's going to give you a choice between which one you want to download and install. And Emidec recommends the bottom one, the 2.0 version, which is the one that I use as well. Anyway, just give it a minute to go through all of these updates and then you'll be good to go. Now one thing you may have noticed when you were doing the update is that it had Citra and Yuzu listed as updated emulators. However, as of making this video, they have removed Yuzu and Citra as installable emulators at this point. And that has to do with all the legal kerfuffle that's happened over the past month or so. However, one thing that the team has done is they've left in the configurations in case you already have Citra and Yuzu installed. And to be clear, Emidec is not going to remove Citra or Yuzu from your Steam Deck or other computer. It really just means they're not going to update the app you already have installed and it isn't going to auto install it either. However, because the configurations are still remaining within EmuDeck, it is possible to add them and it's pretty easy on the Steam Deck. In fact, if you go to the Citro or Yuzu pages within EmuDeck, it's going to say that yes, these apps were shut down and they're no longer available to install. However, within the special configuration section, it does say that if you have the app image, where to put it. And so even though I'm not going to show you where to get them, it's pretty easy to find an archive of these apps. When you're looking for the Steam Deck or Linux versions, you want to make sure that they have a .app image file extension. And once you've found them, you want to go to the home slash applications folder on your Steam Deck. Within there, you'll find a bunch of different app images, but these are the two that you need to add. For Citra, it's going to be in Citra slash QT dot app image. And for Yuzu, it's going to be just the word Yuzu app image as well. Bear in mind that these names are case sensitive, and depending on where you get the app image from, you may have to rename them. But really, that's about it. You just have to put the app images in this specific folder and all the other configurations for Emidec are still there. And so regardless of whether or not you've already installed Yuzu and Citra, or if you want to add them yourself, this is where the app images will reside. One other thing of note, when you open up Emidec the second time after updating, it's going to give you a hotfix message. And what they're saying here is that Emulation Station Desktop Edition has removed Yuzu. However, the Emudec team has created a hotfix that'll bring it back. So if you do get this prompt, just go ahead and hit yes. And if you never see this prompt, but you want to make sure that it's working, go down to the Emulation Station button within Manage Your Emulators, and then click on Reset Configuration. Anyway, that's really about it when it comes to Yuzu and Citra. I wanted to make sure that you knew what to do in case you wanted to update or install this on Emudec. Now I want to talk about some of the emulators that have been added in this new update of version 2.2. In addition to the standalone Flycast emulator, there are three emulators that I really want to focus on because these are really interesting for me. First is the Supermodel emulator. This is going to be for Sega Model 3. And then we also have the Sega Model 2 emulator as well as Big P Emu. This last one is for Atari Jaguar and Atari Jaguar CD. Now, if you want to install any of these emulators, it's super simple. You just want to go onto the emulator page and then click on the button that says install. It'll take a minute just to download the emulator and put it in the right folder, but after that, you're good to go. One thing I do recommend after going through and installing all three of these is to also go back to those pages and reset the configuration. That's going to make sure that all the optimizations and bug fixes have been implemented. Now, before we jump into the emulation part of this video, I do want to show off a couple other features that are available within this new version of Emidec, just so you know what you're doing when you're kind of navigating around. We'll start with the screen resolution section. Within here, you can adjust the resolution of your games and all the upscaling if you'd like. For me personally, because the Steam Deck has an 800p resolution display, I just leave these all at default, which is usually going to be 720p. Next, I want to talk about some of the tools that are exclusive to the Emudeck platform. The first is their compression tool. Now, this one's been around for a while, but they've updated it with a couple new systems. Now, it's going to compress 3DS games as well as Xbox games too. Another thing you may want to do is migrate your installation. So for example, if you've got everything on your internal storage, but you want to move it to an SD card or vice versa, there's a tool to do that as well. And if you're a more advanced user, there's a bunch of plugins you can play around with within Emudec too. The first one is called Emudeki, and this is a plugin that will allow you to access some Emudec controls directly within the game mode. So instead of having to go back to desktop mode and go into this menu, you can do that right in the plugin. And so if you're already familiar with plugins, you're probably going to know how to set all of this stuff up, but it's all available here within the Emudeck menu. There's a couple other plugins that are worth checking out as well, including Steam Deck Gyro DSU. 
This is going to provide you with gyro controls for the Wii U, 3DS, GameCube, Wii, and Nintendo Switch. And also, if you've never installed the Power Tools plugin, you can do that within EmuDeck as well. Anyway, that's a quick recap of some of my favorite new features within EmuDeck. Now let's start installing some games for those new emulators that have been added. And so here's my setup when it comes to installing games. On the left side, we have my SD card. And then on the right side, we have an external drive that I've plugged into my Steam Deck, which has my ROM library on it. So on the left side, I'm going to go into the emulation folder, and then there's a ROMs folder. This is where you're going to put most of your games. We'll start with the Atari Jaguar CD section. And I have these games within my ROM collection, and it's as simple as just moving them over into this new one. Atari Jaguar CD does not require special BIOS or anything, you just need to move the games over. However, one thing I learned after making this footage is that the Jaguar emulator does not work with zip files. So you will have to unzip each of these files and they're going to be in a CDI format after you unzip them. But really that's it when it comes to setting up Atari Jaguar CD games. Let's move on to Sega Model 2. We're going to find this within the Model 2 folder. And for these games, you do want to leave them zipped. So just leave them as they are. Now, of course, I can't show you where to get these games, but it's pretty easy to find an archive of Sega Model 2 and Sega Model 3. And one thing of note, when you grab all of these games and move them into the Model 2 folder, you don't want to put them directly in this folder. You want to put them in the ROM subfolder instead. It's a little bit weird because most of these will not have a ROM subfolder, but I did want to make note of that for Model 2. It's going to be a similar process with Model 3, but this one doesn't have a ROM subfolder, so you just want to move everything over. And one thing of note, the Model 3 emulator works the best when you use non-merge ROM sets. So if you are looking for a Model 3 ROM collection, try to find one that says non-merge. Anyway, that's about it when it comes to installing these ROMs. It's pretty simple. All three of these do not require BIOS files or anything. Now to launch these games, you've got a couple different options. Personally, I like to just use Emulation Station, but if you want to actually add them to your SteamOS interface, you'll have to use Steam ROM Manager. And I went over this tool in detail in my Emudex setup guide, so we're just going to run through it really quickly here. To start, you just want to click on the Steam ROM Manager. It's going to ask you, do you really want to do it? You're going to click, yeah, man, I want to do it. And then it's going to close Steam and then open up this app. From there, you can resize it to take up the whole screen. And after that, you need to choose all of your parsers. This essentially means that you need to choose which systems you potentially want to show in SteamOS. Personally, I like to toggle all of them off and then go through and choose the ones specifically where I know I have games that I want to see in my main menu. And more often than not, there's going to be very few of these that I actually want to turn on. Anyway, once you've gone through and chosen all of these, on the bottom, there's going to be a button called Preview. Click on that. It's going to give you a couple instructions, and then you can tap on that button that says Parse. From there, it's going to look at all those systems that you designated, look in those game folders, and then find the games, and then scrub them against a game database. And depending on how many games you have in those systems that you selected, it might take quite some time. And after it's done doing that, there may be some games here that either were scrubbed incorrectly or maybe you don't actually want them in your interface. So what I do here is I click on that exclude button on the bottom. And then from there, you can click on all of the games that you don't actually want to see in SteamOS. And this usually will take me quite some time because I kind of hem and haw and decide which one do I want to see in SteamOS or which one am I going to launch from Emulation Station. So I do recommend taking your time and less is more with this approach. You don't want to over clutter your system. And also note that many Model 2 and Model 3 games will not show up correctly within here. So chances are it might find the wrong game altogether. It is kind of a mess right now. And that kind of makes sense given the fact that these are not super popular systems, and so maybe the databases aren't fully up to date. Either way, once you've gone through and you're happy with your setup, go up to the top right and there's going to be a save button. Click on that. After that, you should only now see all of the games that you want to see in your SteamOS interface. Once you're happy, there's going to be a save to Steam button on the bottom. Click on that. And once it's complete, you'll get a notification saying that it's done adding or removing entries. Now we're ready to move on. And now when we navigate through our non-Steam library, you'll see all those entries that we added from Steam ROM Manager. And that essentially is how it all is going to work. And like I mentioned, I typically will keep this to my very favorite game, so only the ones that I want to see in my main interface. For everything else, I like to run them through a launcher like Emulation Station. So for example, instead of putting all your Sega Model 2 games on the SteamOS interface, you can just leave them with an Emulation Station by default. And now when I navigate through that section, I can find all my games right here. Bear in mind that I already spent the time and scraped all my box art to make sure everything looked nice and pretty, but this is how it'll look after you have it set up. 
Now, even though I like to use Emulation Station a lot, there's now a new launcher available for Emudex. So let's talk about this one. It's called Pegasus. This is actually a really old app. It's been around for a long time, but it has a lot of customization options to it. And the main developer behind Emudex has been working with Pegasus for years, so it makes a lot of sense that they're using it now. And if you don't already have Pegasus installed, it's really simple to set up. You would just scroll down to the Manage Emulator section within Emudex, and then you would choose to install it like we did with like the Model 2 and Model 3 emulators. And thankfully, most of Pegasus has already been pre-configured for you by the Emudec team. After that, the only other thing you need to do is go into the Pegasus theme section on the left, and then just choose your default theme. You can pick the first one, or there's a bunch of different ones to choose from. So let me now show you what Pegasus is going to look like once you've installed it and added a theme. And it's a pretty zippy and fast interface and very simple to use. You just want to press the shoulder buttons to tap over to the third section that's going to show your game collections. And from there, you can pick a system and it's going to show all your games. Now, if you've already scraped your box art using Emulation Station, all of that scraped media is going to show within Pegasus as well. And that's because they're sharing the same assets, so you don't have to download them twice. However, bear in mind that it might not look congruent between the media and these two launchers. For example, with this theme that I'm using, the Super Nintendo box art is getting cut off. Anyway, launching a game is very fast. You just click on it and it's going to start up. And then all the controls you're probably used to, like pressing select and start to exit a game, all that's going to work. And really, that's about it when it comes to Pegasus. It is a very simple interface, but there are a couple things that prevent me from using this as my main one. The first is that mysteriously, some of these box arts just won't show up, even though I have scraped them with Emulation Station. And the other is that there's not a lot of options here within this launcher. It essentially will just launch your games and that's it. For example, if you want to download and install a new theme for Pegasus, you have to go back into desktop mode, then into Emudeck, and then into the Pegasus theme section. Then you can pick a different theme and install it from there. There. And compared to something like Emulation Station, that is a little bit extra work. In Emulation Station, you can just do that within the app. Anyway, that's a quick look at the Pegasus front end launcher. In case you want to try it out, there are a bunch of different themes, and like I said, they can really change the look and feel of the overall launcher. And there's also a third launcher in the works for Steam Deck. We'll talk about that later in the video. For now, I want to move over and start talking about emulation when it comes to these three systems that we installed earlier. We're going to start with Atari Jaguar CD, and chances are you haven't actually played this system before. To be honest, I didn't even know that Atari had created a CD-ROM version of the Jaguar up until a few years ago when I got more into emulation. And the catalog itself is pretty small. I think there were only maybe 11 or 12 games made for it altogether. But the coolest thing about this is that this was a system that many people thought was lost to time. Sure, there were some people that had original hardware, but those were very few and far between. But one of the great things about emulation is that sometimes it can preserve or revitalize some of these games. And that's exactly what happened with this emulator called Big P Emu. It just started adding Atari Jaguar CD games, and so now everyone can try these out. Now, I'm not saying these games are the best. In fact, some of these are a little bit janky, but all the same, it is super cool to be able to have access to these games that I never thought I'd be able to play. Okay, next let's talk about Sega Model 2. This is an arcade system from around the mid-90s, and there are a lot of hidden gems on here as well. Many of them did not get console ports. If I had to summarize it, I would say there are three main types of games that are available on Model 2, and then there's a bunch of different sub-games that you can play as well. And the first type of game is going to be on-rail light gun games. These were some of my favorites back in the day. They were really popular in the mid-90s. And the great thing about this emulator, it's been configured to be able to use the light gun using the mouse pad. And because we're playing this on the Steam Deck, we can use the right trackpad as the mouse, and it's all been pre-configured. And sometimes the controls will depend on the game that you're playing. With some games, you can use the right trigger to shoot, and with other games, you'll have to press down on the trackpad as you're moving. For those games that do have you press on the trackpad to shoot, like House of the Dead and Virtual Cop 2, to reload, you're going to press on the left trackpad. And I think this is pretty cool given the fact that we have trackpads natively on the Steam Deck, so everything just kind of gets integrated really smoothly with Model 2. Another type of game you'll find on Sega Model 2 are going to be fighting games. In fact, there's quite a few classics on here, and many of these were ported over to the Sega Saturn. That's going to include games like Fighting Vipers and Last Bronx, as well as Virtual Fighter 2. However, one thing to note is that if the game has widescreen hacks available, it'll actually apply them here on your Steam Deck. So these games are actually going to play with a wider screen resolution 
collection than on the original arcade, and they look great. In fact, I've been having a great time playing Virtua Fighter 2. This is actually my favorite Virtua Fighter game. I felt like it was a huge improvement in graphics from the first game, and so I really love the second one. Now, the third type of game that you'll find on the Sega Model 2 is by far the largest. This is going to be racing games. And there's quite a few classics on here, too. I think everyone knows Daytona USA, but there are a couple other hidden gems like Indy 500. In fact, I've never been a huge fan of the Daytona USA controls. It feels like it's a little bit too touchy. Indy 500 is very similar, but it feels a lot more smooth of an experience, so I've been really enjoying this one. There's also other games that I've never tried before, including Overev, and this one is like a city-type racer. It looks really great as well. Another one of my favorites is Sega Rally Championship, and this one is on the Saturn 2, but I feel like this one's just a little bit smoother of a gameplay experience. Not only that, the widescreen hacks I was mentioning before do apply to this game as well. Another game I had never tried before testing is one called Sega Touring Car Championship. And this one feels a lot like Sega Rally Championship, but with obviously a touring car instead. Now, in addition to your straight racing car games, there are a bunch of different racing themed games as well. For example, there's a couple motorcycle games to play. These are a little bit on the touchy side, so I didn't have a ton of fun with these, but all the same, it is cool to have a different vehicle to race with. However, by far, the most fun I had was trying other racing games that were a little bit more unconventional. For example, there's a snow skiing game, but then also a water skiing game, and then finally a jet skiing game as well. In all three of these I found to be very fun to play. The sprites are super big and everything's nice and vibrant, so it's just a fun experience. In addition, there were quite a few other Sega Model 2 games, and some of these are pretty ingenious. First of all, we have a skating game. This one's pretty good. We also have a flying game called Sky Target. This one was known as being an unofficial sequel to Afterburner. Another game I really enjoyed is called Dynamite Baseball 97. Now, this one is all in Japanese, so it's a little bit hard to understand what's going on, but I love arcade-style baseball games, and this one is really good in that regard. Another game that I've tried on the Dreamcast but haven't tried in the arcade version is Dynamite Cop. This one's actually a sequel to Die Hard Arcade that we had on the Sega Saturn, but this one was called something else in Japan. It was called Dynamite Deca. And so this was the second game in that series. And then the last game that I tested for Sega Model 2 that I enjoyed was called Pilot Kids. This is a horizontal shooter that kind of has like a cutesy kind of factor to it. Next, let's talk about Sega Model 3. There's quite a few games here that you might be familiar with. To start, the first thing you'll notice is the graphics are a lot better on this system. This is more along the late 90s or Dreamcast era of games. And so many of these games did get Dreamcast ports later on, including Fighting Vipers 2, Virtua Fighter 3, Virtua Striker 2, as well as Sega Rally 2. So some of these games you've probably already played before, but there are some reasons to try them out with Sega Model 3. For starters, I love these arcade versions because I can just pump a bunch of quarters into it and kind of push my way all the way to the end of the game. In addition, like with Sega Model 2, these do have widescreen hacks applied, and so it's going to fill up the screen all the way, and it looks really good. Now, Sega Model 3 also had its share of conventional games, including racing games, and so there are quite a few different options that you can choose from here. However, what I really like about Sega Model 3 is that it did quite a few games that were outside of the box at the time. One of the games I tested and really enjoyed is called Emergency Ambulance. Now this one, essentially you're just moving a passenger on the ambulance and you're running out of time. But the time here is graded by the health of the passenger that you're moving around. So the way to get further in this game is to avoid all accidents as much as you can, because anytime you hit another car or some other building or whatever, it's going to drop the health of your passenger. So I found that to be a pretty neat dynamic overall. And there are some truly bizarre games as well. There's one called Magical Truck Adventure. In this game, you're going to move the analog stick up and down, and that's basically going to pump a handcart. And if I remember correctly, there was an actual handcart in the arcade machine, so you had to pump it up and down. Anyway, this one's just kind of bizarre, but a lot of fun to play, so I would recommend checking this one out. If you want something a little bit different as well, there's a Sega Bass fishing game. This one's kind of neat. You can cast your lure and then also try to bring the fish in. But I gotta say, the two games that I enjoyed the most with Sega Model 3 were ones that I had played before, but I hadn't touched in over 20 years. The first was Jurassic Park The Lost World, so this one is available on Sega Model 3. Now, I did find that the controls were off for me with this game, and so I ended up having to use the touchscreen, so I was tapping on the dinosaurs to shoot them. And then I would press on the right trackpad to reload my game, and the weird thing here is that the touchscreen didn't quite sync up to where my finger was touching. So unfortunately, even though it was really cool to be able to play one of these Jurassic Park shooter games on my Steam Deck, it wasn't a perfect experience. That being said, by far my favorite experience when testing on all these games was to be able to finally play Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. This is a game that 
that I briefly saw in the late 90s. I think I maybe played it once or twice, but I remember it being very expensive, and so I couldn't afford to play it very much. But it was always a game that I wanted to go back and play. This game is a combination of on-rail shooter, both from a vehicle standpoint, as well as like walking around and shooting. Not only that, it has boss sequences where you'll use a lightsaber, and I remember those being super epic as well. So for me personally, as a big Star Wars fan, this is a game I never really thought I'd be able to play again, and it's really awesome to be able to play it on my Steam Deck. Now one thing of note, the controls on this are not perfect. I found myself switching between the trackpads and the analog sticks, and I also went into the controller settings and configured a bunch of stuff just to make sure everything was working. So it's not a perfect out-of-the-box experience, but with a little bit of tweaking, you can really kind of transport yourself back to like the late 90s when this came out. This is a game I thought was probably lost to time, and so it's really exciting for me to be able to play this game again. Now, as we wrap up, one thing I did want to mention is there are some things in the works for Emidec in the future. The first is that they are creating their own ROM launcher, so like Emulation Station or Pegasus, but made by the Emidec team itself. They've already got RetroArch working great, but they are working on the standalone emulators now, so be on the lookout for this one and I'll be sure to showcase it when I can. There's also two other things they've been working on. The first is a really easy netplay feature. So the idea here is to take two different devices, both running Emudeck, and be able to play them either with each other or against each other, just like you could back in the day. And it's already possible to do netplay like that, but the configuration itself can be a little bit daunting, so it's really cool that they are setting up something a lot easier to use. And finally, the last thing that's been in the works for quite some time is something called Onion Sync. They've been working with the Onion OS team. This is the team responsible for some custom firmware on the Miu Mini Plus. So the idea here is you can use a cloud save feature between the Miu Mini Plus and your Steam Deck or anything else that's running Emudeck. And I think that's a great fit because the Miu Mini Plus is a perfect complement to something big like the Steam Deck. So as soon as this is available, you can bet I'm going to show a video on this as well. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. I wanted to show off both the new features and updates are available for Emudeck, and I also wanted to make a bit of a love letter to Sega Model 2 and 3. These arcade systems in particular are a really great fit for the Steam Deck, so I really enjoyed the hours that I spent testing all of these games getting ready for this video. And many of these I'm going to keep on my Steam Deck permanently because they are a lot of fun. Anyway, let me know what you think about the updates down in the comments, and let me know if there's a Sega Model 2 or 3 game that you really enjoy as well. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.